everybody i wanted to do a video today and the subject i want to do it on is spiritual cleansing techniques and why they don't work um i have already did an article on this and it's on my website exposingtheenemy.com and um but i haven't done a video yet so i want to go ahead and do that to add to my video collection on youtube um before i became a true born again christian I was an avid paranormal investigator and the founder of a paranormal research team called Dead Time Paranormal Investigations in Central Florida. As part of my paranormal research, I had an excessive amount of paranormal equipment, such as a CC a TV stationary camera and monitor set. I had infrared digital cameras, audio recorders, EMF pump, EMF meters. IR temperature meters, ghost boxes, Ouija boards, you name it. <laughs> um, along with the investigation equipment, I carried a small case that contained my protection and house clearing supplies. In this case, I had items such as sage, candles, rosary beads, holy water, salt, cards. The cards that I had in there were actually, um, they had the um, St. Michael the Archangel prayer protection prayers on them, and I would distribute those out to my other team members and uh, to people um, that had the hauntings in their homes. So these items are common items used by different religions, such as Wiccans, Pagans, Shamans, or even by some religions that guise under the umbrella, umbrella of Christianity, for example, Catholic exorcist. By using items that were commonly used by several different types of religious techniques, I was practicing something called religious syncretism. Syncretism, as to by, by definition um, of the American Heritage Dictionary, is the reconciliation or fusion of differing systems of belief. This is, not, this is most evident in the areas of philosophy and religion and usually results in a new teaching or belief system. Obviously, this cannot be reconciled to biblical Christianity, which I would later find out why, as it because it's it because it is only Jesus and only Him that is the true way, and He is the true deliverer. As an ex paranormal investigator, one of my main objectives while I was in the field of paranormal research was to help others that were being tormented by evil spirits, and oftentimes we were asked to rid a home or place of negative energies. Although I identified myself personally as a Christian, as I went to church often my whole life, but it did not reflect in the way I was living, hence my involvement in the occult. As part of my research, I was not looking in the Bible for my answers on how to do spirit banishments, house clearings, etc., I was seeking the answers from other people in the paranormal community and at the local bookstores. At these bookstores, I found many books on the subject of ghosts or paranormal activity, and almost always I would find at least one chapter in those books dedicated to instructions on how to cleanse a home of ghosts or demonic spirits, negative energies, etc. <laughs> While no two books are exactly the same, they usually always pretty much gave very similar instructions on certain techniques accepted and used by the paranormal community. Uh, they included techniques such as burning sage, black candle banishments, placing salt in a house or and outside a house at each corner of the property lines, burning torn line, while some use items that are associated are often associated with Christian faith, such as rosary beads, holy water, um, prayers to St. Michael the Archangel, or placing Bibles or crosses in rooms that are believed to have paranormal activity. Although these specific techniques were often associated with Christianity, they were actually not biblical at all. I found that in all the cases we followed up on where we used these items, the spirits, demons, would seem to leave, but we would often find out later by the clients that they returned. You see, these demonic spirits do play possum. Why would this be? This is something I would not find out until the answers to until the day of my deliverance in February 2011. 
After I was in the occult, the paranormal field, for many years, it came a time where my home became a spiritual war zone. I had experienced paranormal activity in several homes we lived in through the years, but it finally came a time when these spirits that were that were for the majority of the time, usually never threatening or negative, suddenly became very negative, threatening, and ultimately became even physical. It was interesting, though, that these spirits became negative around the same time that I started to question and figure out that these ghostly spirits that we interacted with were truly demonic spirits that were mimicking the dead, as this is actually what the Bible teaches. The Bible teaches that when a person dies, they immediately go to either heaven or hell, depending on if they were a believer or non-believer, and that once a person is in the in is in heaven or hell, that it is not a place for them to come back to visit. That's not possible. I'm sorry. That's not possible for them to come back and visit or to warn the living. Please see Luke 16, 19 through 31. When these spirits became so negative and aggressive, um, it was mostly my husband that was experiencing the physical attacks. I became desperate. They were not only threatening me, but they were also tormenting a few of my family members. I tried all the techniques I learned to use, but none worked. With my Christian background, I usually use items such as crosses, rosary beads, and I even had open Bibles in every room of our house. I hung rosary beads over every door and window, and every time one of us would get attacked, we would command the spirits to leave in the name of Jesus. Every, everything would stop. But these, but these attacks would always return yet another night. I just could not figure it out. I couldn't get rid of it, no matter what we tried. I began to pray to God more and more and seek Him on it, as I was at the point of desperation. I started researching online more about true biblical deliverance, and I listened to some deliverance ministers on the internet on the internet radio talk about deliverance and casting demons out. I also watched testimonial videos of others that went through very similar things. One in particular was uh, Laura Maxwell. It was her testimony um, that I listened to. Uh, it was a very severe um, things that she went through. Um, you really, really, I suggest people to watch her videos it's Laura Maxwell, and and I watched some on others, too. So I decided that perhaps I should take my husband, since he was the one that was getting most of the physical attacks, to a church to see if they could help us and get deliverance. Um, we went to a local church. After the service was over, we walked down and talked to the assistant pastor, and I told him about these attacks. I explained to him that I was a paranormal investigator and that it was that it was possible that I may have brought home an attachment of a, of a negative spirit from a previous investigation I did. He told me immediately that I not needed to stop my involvement in the occult and that, and I wasn't, I was not clear on what he meant um, at the time as I did not think that my paranormal research was in any way related to the occult. You see, I did. I just I thought we were helping people. I really did not understand that what I was doing was occultic practices. But it was but it it was because it involved divination, necromancy and the fact that when people die, their spirit is no longer here earthbound. You see, I was actually engaging with demonic spirits. This is why I had an open door. And he told me that by my involvement with the occult, that this was an open door, an invitation for the demonic spirits to attack me and my household. He then looked over at my husband and noticed that my husband had on a rosary bead necklace. And he asked him why he was wearing it. My husband and I both started to explain to him that it was for protection. And I told him how we had rosary beads hung in my house over all the doors and windows and I also told him about all the Bibles that I had in my house in every room. He asked my husband to take off the necklace, and my husband complied. 
although we were both very confused by it, because here we are sitting at a church and they told us to take off of a necklace that had a cross on it. Why? Well, I, I, I couldn't figure it out. Why? Well, then he explained to us. He said that when you put your faith in an object, you're taking your faith off Jesus. It is Jesus and Jesus alone that sets people free. You see, suddenly this all made sense to me. This was why all of these other things I was using was not working. And the reason why that when I did use the name of Jesus, the spirits would leave, but then they would always return. And they were there because of my involvement in the occult. And I was not a true believer and follower of Christ. I made the decision that day at that moment to follow Christ and to leave the occult. And after he prayed for us, I went home and I got rid of all my paranormal equipment and, and anything else that I felt convicted of having in my home. It, some of it did take a little bit of time to get rid of, but nonetheless, I did not walk through my house saying prayers or, or waving crosses or, or any of these things, but we never had paranormal activity again. This was in 2011. The Bibles that I had open in my house had no power. As the only way it gives us power is when we apply the Bible to our lives. This is the only true safety in Christ. There's only true safety in Christ. And when we are obedient to him and his word, when we are disobedient to him, we are leaving his umbrella of protection. He loves us and he tries to warn us in his holy word about the ramifications of sin and what sin does to us. He tries to protect us with his loving guidance and warnings in his word. I praise God for truly delivering and saving me that day. As a result of my experiences and deliverance, I learned a few valuable things. I learned that you cannot use physical objects or means to fight a spiritual battle and that there is only one authority in or under heaven that can crush spiritual darkness. That is Jesus Christ. And we must be a believer in him and he must, we must follow him. I also learned that the Bible is our only true source of information regarding spiritual warfare and all other things that pertain to this life. I hope that this video helps. I, I truly do. Um, I wanted other people to know this, and I know a lot of people doesn't really like to read articles or anything, but, you know, I, I wanted to make it available to those who, um, you know, that are on YouTube. So anyway, may God bless you all, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. God bless. Bye-bye.